hey, let's make some word art in GIMP. Now, if you are on a school computer in the computer lab, if you go to the start menu and go to all programs, you'll find GIMP2 in here somewhere. You might have to scroll for it. If you've opened GIMP before, you might see it right here. So you don't even need to go to all programs. Now, I already have GIMP open, so I don't even have to do that. Now, when you first open it up, you will see this window. However, there's a bit of a glitch where sometimes it doesn't show you the Layers menu or the Toolbox menu. You're going to need both of these for this lesson. So, if you don't see them, go to Windows, go down to either Recently Enclosed Docs, and you might see them in there if you're lucky, or go down to Dockable Dialogs, and that's where you'll find the Layers option. You click on that, and this will pop open. Toolbox is below Dockable Dialogs because they figure people use that a lot more than the various dialogs they have available. Okay, so now we've got all of our windows that we need. We are going to get started by creating a new blank document. I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go to New. I'm not going to change any of this. We can leave it just the way it is. Click OK. And there's our new blank document. And we're not going to do any of this. We're going to add a new layer and work on that instead. We want our white background to stay pristine. So I'm going to click on the text tool here, the big capital A. I'm going to click over here, I'm going to write a single word. I just decided to go with my name because why not? You can use your first name if you want to. You could use a different word. You could use your major if you wanted to. That's all good. I'm going to select this and I'm going to increase the font size. I went and changed the font to something different. I went with Show Card Gothic, but you can click over here in Tool Options. Again, if you don't see Tool Options, go to Dockable Dialogs and look for Tool Options, and you can open up that window also. And there's all these different fonts that you can go with. Some of them are larger than others. Take your pick. And now I'm never going to be able to find Show Card Gothic. There it is. Okay. All right, now I'm going to use the Move tool, which is these four arrows pointing in different directions, and I'm going to try to get my name to be a little centered. That looks pretty good. Okay. And it's very important that you go with the default color for this. Let your word be totally black. That's going to help us out later. The color change is going to happen in another step. All right, now... I'm going to add a brand new layer by clicking on this little button here. And in this case, I want my new layer to be the foreground color, which is still black. I could go with the background color or white or transparency, but it's going to help me out if I go with the foreground color. Okay, so this brand new layer is like another sheet of paper put on top of the other one. I can scribble over this, and it's not going to change this one or this one. I just have to make sure this is the one that I have selected. So I'm going to grab um, any of these tools that adds color. I'm going to go with the pencil tool. Now this has a really neat option in the tool options where I can apply jitter and I can change the amount. So if I pick another color, let's go with red. I'm not even going to close this window. I'm just going to leave that open so I can change the color as much as I want. And I draw a line. It doesn't draw a straight line. It's wiggly. I'm going to scribble. Now normally I would say don't scribble because you're in middle school and why are you scribbling? But in this particular instance, scribbling is actually very useful. Oops. Control Z, anytime you make a mistake. I went back to the move tool for some reason. There we go. Okay, so I've scribbled all over and there's no white spaces anywhere because I started with my foreground color. White spaces will be a problem and you'll see why in a little bit. Now I want to make this leave a little more chaotic. And to do that, I'm going to go into Filters. And the filters that you can go with are Artistic or Distort. Or you can use a combination of the two if you want to. Uh, take your pick. doesn't matter. Uh, let's try Oilify. And I can play with this. Okay. I 
Actually, I think that made it a little less chaotic. So let's control Z and pick a different filter. Your results are going to vary. Play around with this. Make it look weird. Make it look interesting. Ooh. Oh, I like that. I could play with these settings, but I think I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. All right. Now. That already did something with my name there, but I'm going to take it one step further. Over here, where it says Mode Normal, I am going to click on this, and I'm going to change it to Screen. Now, wherever my name is on this layer, it's going to show the pattern that I made on this new layer that I made. But anywhere it isn't, it's going to show my white background. Now, if I move this layer around, if I go and change it, let's click the little eyeball here to go back to this. What if I change the word? Let's change it to tech instead. And that got really small, so let's enlarge that. Okay, let's put this little eyeball up here again, bring that layer back. Oh, look, it's a different word. Isn't that cool? I think it's cool. Okay, so two ways to save this. First is, if I want to come back and edit this again, I have to go to File and click Save or Save As. Well, Save As would be the first time if I want to give it a new name. If I hit Save, it's going to give me the same menus, unless I've already saved it once. Now, that's great for editing it again, but it's not so great for handing it in as a project. If you want to hand it in as a project, you got to go to Export. You click on that and make sure it's ending in .png. If it doesn't end in .png, go down to this little plus sign here where it says select file by type. Click on that and scroll down until you find PNG. It's sorted alphabetically. So if you start seeing like R's and T's, you've gone too far. There you go, PNG image. If for some reason this had a different suffix, clicking on this would change it again. So if I go to Photoshop, see how it changed to PSD, PPM, it says PPM, we want PNG, Portable Network Graphic Image. Give it a name that you'll remember, and hit Export. You'll get another pop-up. You can safely ignore all this stuff up here. Just click Export again, and congratulations, you have saved something to upload to Google Classroom, or to use for whatever project you want to use it for. If you have any questions, feel free to ask.